Hey guys, we have some amazing news today. Andrew Yang can not only build the broadest coalition among voters, like he said, he also build broadest coalition among Democratic candidates. That's really amazing. When other candidates are busy attacking each other, Andrew Yang is making friends. Think about that. They are competitors. Okay, so Tulsi Gabbard just came out to say that I agree with my friend Andrew. Yeah, I think universal basic income is a good idea. This this was a, a, a I'm gonna play this video um, for you. The video is from the debate, but this ad just came out. Okay, Tulsi Gabbard is paying ad, Facebook ads, to say that he supports Andrew Yang's universal basic income. Think about that. There are two of these. That's just amazing. All right. So from the debate. Then I, I agree with my friend Andrew Yang. I think universal basic income is a good idea to help provide that security so that people can have the freedom to make the kinds of choices that they want to see. Then I, I agree with my friend Andrew Yang. I think you okay. not only does Tulsi Gabbard support Andrew Yang's universal basic income. But she also said, I agree with my friend Andrew Yang. This is, she's so genuine in saying that Andrew Yang is my friend. And, and so is Cora Booker. Okay, so Cora Booker and Andrew Yang, I, I published uh, this video before, genuine friends. So that um, Cora Booker said, you know, I like nice people. He's a really nice guy. And Andrew Yang said, I'm genuine friends with Corey, we text each other. I miss the guy, and Andrea even said on the base stage that I miss Corey, I miss Kamala, and I hope they'll be back. All right, so see that's real friends. Okay, Tulsi Gabber actually tweeted. See, on Andrea's birthday, Tulsi Gabber tweeted at Andrew Yang, happy. 45th, my friend. Thanks, Halsey. Celebrating on the trail. We'll see you soon. See, they are genuine friends. This is not like Elizabeth Warren saying Bernie Sanders is her friend. Let's watch this. Yesterday, that and Senator Sanders, Senator Warren confirmed in a statement that in 2018, you told her that you did not believe that a woman could win the election. Why did you say that? Well, as a matter of fact, I didn't say it. Uh, and I don't want to waste a whole lot of time on this because this is what Donald Trump and maybe some of the media want. Uh, anybody knows me knows that it's incomprehensible that I would think that a woman could not be president of the United States. Go to YouTube today. There's some video of, the, of me 30 years ago talking about how a woman could become president of the United States. In 2015, I deferred, in fact, to Senator Warren. There was a movement to draft Senator Warren to run for president. And you know what? I said, stayed back. Senator Warren decided not to run, and I did, I did run afterwards. Hillary Clinton won the popular vote by three million votes. How could anybody in a million years not believe that a woman could become president of the United States? And let me be very clear. If any of the women on this stage or any of the men on this stage win the nomination, I hope that's not the case. I hope it's me. <laughs> but if they do, I will do everything in my power to make sure that they are elected in order to defeat the most dangerous president in the history of our country. And then the moderator turned to Elizabeth Warren asking her, when Bernie told you women cannot win presidency, what did you say? What, what was your response? And Elizabeth Warren said, I disagreed. Bernie is my friend, and I'm not here to try to fight with Bernie. Bernie is not your friend. You're a freaking liar. You're, free, you're, you're lying here, okay? Bernie never said that to you. And, and why would you, you know, you, you're like calling Bernie a liar, okay, on the na national debate stage. And then Warren, afterwards, Warren refused to shake hands with Bernie. I think you called me a liar on national TV. What? I think you called me a liar on national no. TV. 
let's not do it right now. You want to have that discussion? We'll have that Any discussion. Point. You called me. You told me. All right, let's not do it I'm now. Not, I don't want to get in the middle of it. I just want to say hi, Bernie. Yeah, good. <laughs> exactly. I mean, Warren. So Warren was really annoyed. So, you know, she waited for like, you know, an hour or something. And, and then wanted to say to Bernie. And she refused to shake hands with Bernie. I mean, come on. Is that... You just said Bernie's your friend, and now you refuse to shake hands with your friend? Like Bernie reached out to you, like Bernie wanted to de-escalate this, and then Warren refused, and she said something that she had wanted to say an hour ago. You call me, <laughs> you call me as a liar on national TV. That's what she felt. But in fact, it was Warren who called Bernie a liar, right? We just had this analysis. That was just so, so apparent. They are actually not friends. <laughs> well, at least I think Elizabeth is not a friend with Bernie, okay? So I hope uh, this is super clear to you that Andrew Yang is the one who can build the broadest coalition and even among the candidates his competitors, and that's why he will actually win. He can win the whole thing. And after Tulsi Gabbard dropped out, after, you know, Tom Steyer dropped out, I think there is likely so that they will endorse Andrew Yan. They are friends, okay? Just like what Marianne Williamson did to Andrew Yan, right? So she helped Andrew Yan's campaign in Iowa. He came out to support Andrew Yan's first Democratic candidate an ex-candidate who came out to support another candidate. So that's really, really nice and significant. I, I couldn't agree more. This campaign's about humans versus the machine. And the machine, it, it can be the agricultural conglomerates, it can be the military industrial complex, it can be the big pharma. We have to have humans win, am I right? Yeah. And I have to say, uh, Marianne has helped me be more human. It's one of the most human people I know, so thank you, Marianne. Yeah. about Andrew right now about that. Um, you know, Andrew talks about humanity first. And I, I think that in the 21st century, we are living at a time where we are moving from a transactional to a relational way of being. And we need to move from a transactional to a relational way of leadership. And this is one of the reasons why I think Andrew is the person for the job because there is a transactional politics that is, that is part of the Democratic and Republican establishment. And even the best people are stuck within that box. And I have witnessed and I've experienced and I've been the, uh, the beneficiary of the fact that Andrew does not think about political issues just in terms of, you know, he talks about, you talk about math and you talk about intellectually figuring these things out, which no one does better than you. But I've known you to be someone who will stand in the moment and really listen to the person in front of you and allow the, what in Fairfield we can understand is so profound, the organic flow of wisdom that is emerging from that moment. And I believe with the chaos that is coming in the 21st century, with the chaos that is already here, nothing is more important than that we have a leader who can stand within the space of what is happening and respond not only from your head, but from your heart. And <laughs> And I think, you know, all these people, these candidates, sooner or later they will endorse Andrew Yang. Because Andrew Yang is the only new way forward. His humanity first, not left, not right, forward, would be resonating with most of the voters, including first time voters, Trump supporters, um, those disaffected voters, and um, libertarians, uh, independents. So he can build the broadest coalition best suited to beat Donald Trump in 2020. All right, that's it for today. Thank you, and um, please like and subscribe and comment below.